I've been avoiding it ever since the rumor first popped up back in February, but I think it's finally time. Time to get into the nitty gritty. Time to dive into the details. Should the Magic go after Clay Thompson? The case for and against signing the four-time champion on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is June 19th, 2024. My name is Philip Ross, and I'm a senior writer over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, it's time to get to the details. It's time to dig in. It's time to figure out if the biggest rumor out there is worth pursuing the case for and against signing Clay Thompson. We're going to dive into why he would be a great fit for the Magic, why he might not be, and then figure out if the juice is worth the squeeze, whether it's worth the cost of getting it. We're going to get to all that coming up here in just a moment, but first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is brought to you by Finn. We'll make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200. In bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I want to start here. Um, I read the criticism. I know what my weaknesses are. I am a fairly conservative guy. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, I am fairly risk averse. uh, And so I tend to, you know, and I'm also an attorney uh, as well. I went to law school. I'm trained to think of the downsides of things and to play both sides. So I want to start our conversation here today um, as first saying that, you know, hey, you don't win free agency by winning the headlines. Like the headlines don't necessarily judge that. And, and I think I made it clear in the Paul George podcast, I can't think of a basketball reason not to go after Paul George. The money is the problem. Um, there are a lot of things that go into this. And so I want to start here by just saying I am I am laying out information. You can probably tell where I'm leaning and and, and what I'm thinking um, in this. And, and you know, among the players we've talked about, I would probably say Malik Monk is the best free agent option. But I'm also going to sit here and say, knowing how this Magic team operates, we probably are not even thinking or discussing what the Magic are going to do. So I'm not going to hear. I'm going to qualify that as all this. There is no doubt, though that this is a fan base that is hungry for attention, that feels like this is the time to grab the headlines, to change the narrative about this team, and to elevate this team to a higher level. I, I will say it flat out, and, and and I think this is something that's really valuable and a reason to go after a player like Clay Thompson. The Magic need a Horace Grant. They need someone who's been there. They need someone who has won games at the highest level can tell a Palo Bancaro, hey, you're doing things the right way, or hey, this is how I work and won a title. Follow me. Copy me. Isn't necessarily going to overtake everything. You know, obviously, Horace Grant didn't overtake Shaq or Penny or anything like that. But kind of helped pave the road. Pointed them in the right direction of winning a championship. And obviously, Orlando signed Horace Grant back in 1994. Magic made the finals in 1995. I am a big believer that Horace Grant is a big reason why that young team got serious very, very fast. And obviously, Shaq, transcendent talent, Penny, transcendent talent. That has a lot to do with the two. At the end of the day, talent wins. Undoubtedly, Clay Thompson would be a transformational figure for this Orlando Magic team. I can't sit here and deny any of that. If you've listened to me on this pod for a long time, and we talk about shooting so much, and the Magic have not had quality shooting in 10 years and more than 10 years since Dwight Howard left, since JJ Redick and Ryan Anderson were here and Rashard Lewis and all those guys, the magic have signed some good shooters, whether it's Channing Fry, whether, you know, whether it's DJ Augustine, they've had some good shooters, but they haven't had 
a consequential shooter, a shooter that will get defenses to respect him just by his presence on the floor. The Magic had a shooting problem last year. They're, 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 there's no getting around this. The Magic were 24th in the league in three-point field goal percentage, as Jeff Waltman likes to point out, 15th after January 1st. But 29th in attempts per game. The Magic simply were not shooting enough threes to make even their three-point improvements matter. Jalen Suggs is shooting 38 39% from three. Defenses don't care. They're still happy to let him shoot. That's the cent- central problem for the Magic. And by the way, I don't mind that Jeff Waltman's pointing out that the Magic were 15th in the league and three-point field goal percentage after January 1st. That's more than half the season. That's significant. It didn't help the Magic that much offensively. They were still 21st in the league in offensive rating after January 1st. Klay Thompson gives this Magic team something they have not had, and that is a three-point threat that commands respect. Look, it was not a good year for Klay Thompson last year. 17.9 points per game, shot 38.7% from three, nine three-point attempts per game. 55.1% effective field goal percentage and 57.6% true shooting percentage. We'll get to those numbers here in a little bit. Klay Thompson just shooting nine three-pointers per game and making a high clip of them at 38.7%, that would transform Orlando's offense. Having a three-point shooter who can get his shot off against quality defense, that defenses have to respect, that has that reputation. Klay Thompson is one of the absolute best three-point shooters this league has ever seen. That commands respect. That is what we call gravity. No one on this Magic team has gravity. And if the biggest need for the Orlando Magic this offseason is shooting. And again, a little bit better shooting, a, few, a little fewer turnovers, making some more free throws, this offense is going to get very, very good very, very quickly. It does not take much for the Magic to get from where they're at offensively to top half of the league, knocking on the door in the top 10. I truly believe that. Paolo Bancaro getting better, reducing your turnovers, making your free throws. Things can change very quickly for this team. And if they can maintain their defense and make those improvements on offense, we're talking about a team that's could potentially contending for something very, very real. Klay Thompson is a player that, regardless of anything else, will help the Magic get there. He is an excellent three-point shooter. He knows how to get his shot off. He gives the team a new dynamic as a movement shooter, creating a little bit more motion in their offense. This is someone that can make a very real impact and make that impact very quickly. That's what the Magic are looking at. And so I've personally dismissed all these rumors as professional dot connecting. I, I like, like I say, like I say all the time during the trade deadline and during these rumor mill periods. When you see a rumor, ask yourself, who's reporting it? What could their sources be? And why is this coming out now? What's the purpose behind it? And I looked at all those rumors connecting Clay Thompson. A, they were coming from Golden State. They were coming from national reporters. They weren't coming from people that have a history of being connected to Orlando. Mark Stein may still have a relationship with Jamal Mosley from Dallas. So maybe there's something there. But it just felt like professional dot connecting. The Magic need shooting. They have cap room. Klay Thompson didn't get a new deal with the Warriors. Here we are. But we all have to admit that there's a reason those dots are being connected. There's a reason why we're talking about Malik Monk, DeAndre Russell, Tyus Jones, why we're talking about Devin Carter, Bub Carrington, Dalton Connect, uh, all the shooters that you can, Kishan George, all the shooters you can find in the draft and free agency, Buddy Heald, DeAnthony Melton, Bring them all down to Orlando. Everyone knows this Magic team needs shooting. And no matter what state or status Clay Thompson is in, he fills the biggest need the Magic have. Both off the court and intangibly with his experience and the level of professionalism he would bring to this team. And with the fact that he is a dangerous three-point shooter. Like, Here's a stat that tells you more than anything else. Clay Thompson had 35 games of 10 or more three-point attempts last year. 
Orlando as a team had 11 such games total during the regular season. 11 total, Thompson had 35. If the Magic could integrate a player that is willing and can, and you're trying to set up to make eight, not to shoot eight, nine, 10 three pointers a game, that completely changes your offense. And it completely changes your spacing because, regardless of anything else, defenses have to care about Clay Thompson on the floor. He has true gravity. And he's not just a three point shooter. He can shoot from the mid range. He scores off screens. He scores off cuts. He is a smart, smart basketball player. None of that goes away. And that dot connecting is pretty darn strong. But there's a little bit more behind these numbers. And we went over the percentages. We went over uh, some of that earlier. It was a bad year for Clay Thompson. And we got to ask if it's not going to get better. We're going to talk a little bit about the drawbacks of Clay Thompson, why he is not the guy to chase after. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With more than 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home some huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Be sure to check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel to stay up to date on all of the biggest stories in sports. You don't want the national coverage. You don't want the yelling. You don't want the shouting. You don't want the screaming. You want the best analysis from people who know their team best. Just imagine, there's someone like me who knows the ins and outs and everything about the Orlando Magic for pretty much every team in the NBA and pretty much every team in the American sports world. So go to the Locked On Sports Today to hear their analysis and their takes on the biggest stories in sports. You can find that on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. That's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm not going to beat around the bush about this. Um, let me let me, let me me make this part really clear because, you know, I'm, I'm going to come out against signing Klay Thompson. I, I don't think he's the right move for this team at this juncture. But I want to make this perfectly clear. Klay Thompson does make the Magic a better team. Just his presence on the team makes the Magic a more dangerous offensive team because you cannot leave him open. As long as you have drivers and attackers willing to pass to Klay Thompson, they can't leave him because he is that dangerous of a shooter. And so now all of a sudden you're playing five on four because one player is not leaving Klay Thompson. And so the odds increase the odds of you finding a match of advantage increase when that happens. And again, that's you watch Boston. You couldn't leave anybody. So you had a lot of guys left on an Island. You were forced to switch a lot. Boston found switches. They like, they attack them. They get the ball moving. They spread you out. That's where the magic eventually want to go. They're not quite there yet, but Clay Thompson, because he's such a volume shooter transforms this team. And you know, if the Magic sign him to whatever deal they sign him, and we're going to get to some of the money issues coming up here in a minute. Um, if the Magic sign him to whatever they're going to sign him to, he will make this team better. The Magic will be better with Klay Thompson on the floor. But we have to ask, our, ask this important question. The Magic will be paying for past performance. They will not be paying for future performance. So the question will be whether they will get the full value of whatever they're signing into. I mentioned those numbers earlier. Clay Thompson shooting 38.7% from three, um, shot 38.1% on catch and shoot threes. 
For the Magic, those are fantastic numbers. Like Jalen Suggs had a breakthrough three-point shooting year. He shot about 39%. Klay Thompson's obviously doing this on more volume. These are fantastic numbers for Clay Tom- for, for the Magic. But for Klay Thompson, this was undoubtedly a down year. That 38.7% three-point shooting was just the second time in his career he shot worse than 40% from three. More alarmingly, perhaps, two of those instances occurred in the last three seasons. His 38.4% shooting on catch-and-shoot three-pointers put him in just the 68th percentile in the league. He was at 41.4% in 2023. He made 40.5% of his corner threes in 2023, compared to 35.7% last year. Thompson won't get a ton of open threes. He takes a lot of contested shots. He makes a lot of contested shots. He gets his jumper up quickly, doesn't need a lot of space to get it up. He is, and obviously he's still making enough to get the respect. He's got the reputation that's earned him respect as a shooter. We're talking about going from an elite shooter to just a pretty good shooter. So I want to make sure you understand that there's those levels. But Clay Thompson's going to turn 35 in December. He is very clearly on the tail end of his career. And while injuries are not a concern, he's played 60 plus games. Uh, he played 63, 64 games in 2023, he played 70 plus games in 2024. The injury stuff is a little bit behind him. It's clear he's slowing down. It's clear this is the end of his career. And I would argue that someone like Clay Thompson is someone you bring in as the last step of your rebuild, as kind of the last piece to get you over the top. The, the, you know, the same argument that I made against Paul George. Okay, you're going to pay that much money for Paul George. He's got injury. He's, he's got injury issues. He's got an injury history. Um, is he going to be happy as a third fiddle? You know, all that stuff. Philadelphia's windows now. They need to win now. Orlando... They need to win now, too. Don't get me wrong. We need to win. We need to make the playoffs again, compete, get to the second round if you can. But the conference championship window is probably not opening for another year or two. Again, maybe you, maybe you burst it open. I'm not going to sit here and pretend otherwise. But the Magic don't want to be good for the next two, three years when Thompson would be here. They want to be good for the next five, six, seven years. That's the window we're talking about. It's a much bigger window for Orlando. And Clay Thompson, to me, is a very short-sighted because he's declining. We can all see it in the numbers that while he's still very good, able to contribute, he's declining. And honestly, the biggest place to look at this is on defense. Last year, the Warriors had a 116.1 defensive rating with Thompson on the floor. That trailed only Andrew Wiggins for the worst mark on the team. Now, some of that might just be Golden State's overall defensive um Defensive decline. Big reason why Golden State ended up in the play-in tournament again. Big reason why Golden State missed the playoffs entirely, losing to the Kings uh, in that play-in game. In 2023, the Warriors had a 112-6 defensive rating with Thompson on the floor, though. So four-point difference. And the difference was the Warriors were 1.6 points for one of the worse than their overall average with Thompson on the floor last year. They were 0.8 points for one of the possessions better than the team's average in 2023. Again, some of that is team context. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. So maybe Clay Thompson comes to Orlando, much younger team, good defensive principles. Clay Thompson slides back in, is back being a positive defender. Back being, you know, back to being the best kind of defender he can be. You got Jalen Suggs next to him instead of Steph Curry. You know, you could put him with Jonathan Isaac a little bit. You might his defense might improve when he gets here. But this is the thing. And this is the important thing to remember. Clay Thompson is 35. His skills are beginning to deteriorate. And essentially last year, he was a 3 and D player. A super 3 and D player. He's not much of a playmaker, not going to get a lot of assists, not going to work off the dribble a ton. Everyone remembers that game where he had like 50-some points on like three dribbles. Not his game. And so as he starts to age... His three-point shooting is no longer elite. His defense is no longer elite. Now you're looking at a very high-priced, very important, very high volume, but a role player. And at some point, you're going to be left holding the bag on that. At some point, 
he isn't going to be a star or a, a starring player, or he's going to crash back down to earth. And again, crashing back down to earth for Clay Thompson from three is still really valuable to the Magic. Like, if Clay Thompson gives the Magic what he gave the Warriors last year, at least from his three-point shooting, that transforms Orlando. So maybe I'm overthinking this. Maybe we are. Maybe the shooting is what matters and the Magic can make the defense work. But like I said, this is a much wider window. Klay Thompson is looking to get one last big payday. Got a two to three year window here where Klay Thompson is still going to be really valuable before he becomes a very different player. Before he just kind of ages out. The Magic are looking beyond. Six, seven years down the road. They need to set the table now, this summer, next summer, the last summers they have to spend money for much further beyond. And frankly, Clay Thompson, if you sign him to a three-year deal, sign him a two-year deal, that's how long you have Clay Thompson. Because his defense is deteriorating. His shooting is no longer super elite. Again, Thompson would dramatically help the Magic. And so ultimately, whether the Magic chase after Clay Thompson is down to a few things. The first thing is whether his three-point shooting outweighs what you might lose defensively. And again, that's the question the Magic are asking about all of these players, about Tyus Jones, about D'Angelo Russell, about Malik Monk. It's whether adding a three-point shooting specialist, which the Magic absolutely need. They need some volume three-point shooting. They need guys who are not afraid to put up 10 threes again in a game. Magic don't have that. Again, I, I mentioned it earlier. Clay had 35 of those games last year. Orlando as a team had 11. The Magic have to ask themselves whether giving up that giving up some defense or three-point shooting is worth it and whether they can bring in a player like Clay Thompson who can fit it. Now, I will fully admit this. Of the players we have talked about to this point outside of Paul George, Clay Thompson, to me, is the most likely to understand what his role is and understand how to be a part of a good defensive team. That's part of that championship experience. And so while I am skeptical that Clay Thompson is the right choice, he would undoubtedly, I want to repeat this, he would undoubtedly make this team better. And so ultimately, the question then comes down to price. And that is the most difficult thing to figure out about Clay Thompson and whether he fits what the Magic are doing. And we're going to talk about what the price might be and how that changes everything for Orlando coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at FanDuel. Summertime means baseball. The NBA has put itself to bed, at least until Summer League, the WNBA is still around. We still got the Stanley Cup final going on, and you can bet on it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on everything from the finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. In fact, on FanDuel, they already have odds to win the 2025 NBA championship and the Orlando magic are pretty low on the list. Actually, Orlando, if uh, looking at this list, actually Orlando has the longest odds of any team that made the playoffs at plus 8,000. That's 800 to one odds. You bet a, you bet a hundred dollars. You win 8,000. Um, uh, uh, it's eight to one odds. Actually it's a uh, eight to one. No, that's it. That'd be 81. Um, it's 800 to one odds. Um, or 80 to one odds. I can't math today. But you, you win a lot of money if the Magic end up winning. In fact, on conference winners, Orlando is sitting behind the Indiana Pacers at plus 4,000. Plus 4,000 to, to, get, to get there. And even on NBA, uh, they don't have the good NBA player awards, but you can bet on pretty much everything from even who's going to go with, go with the number one overall pick and even try and predict where Bronny James is going to end up. The Magic are actually listed there as well at plus 10,000. So pretty long odds that the Magic would draft Bronny James. Uh, we're not going to talk more about him. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and add a big win to your summer bucket list. Fan FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Ultimately, I think we talk about all of these free agents. 
there are two considerations, how they fit on the floor. And that's the first and most important consideration. Um, and, 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 and how players fit on the floor and all that, that matters so much. And look, we've gone through all the big names already. Now we've gone through D'Angelo Russell, Malik Monk, Tyus Jones, Paul George, and now Clay Thompson. It's easy to envision all of them having a fit on the floor for Orlando. Um, there are questions about all of them. Maybe not so much Paul George, but there are questions about all of them and how they fit. But then you get to the second consideration. And that's how much is it going to cost you and what does that cost you down the road? I would argue, again, a lot of this offseason is as much about setting the table for the next five years as it about approve, improving this team this year. Orlando currently has a two-year window to spend money. Because after Franz Wagner and Jalen Suggs sign their extensions next summer, and it will probably be next summer. I don't think it's going to be this summer. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. After they sign their extensions, the Magic don't have money to spend anymore. All this fun cap room talk, this 30 to $50 million the Magic have to spend, it's gone in two years. Because Franz is going to be making $38, $39 million. Jalen Suggs is going to be making 26, 27, 28, maybe $30 million as well. And then Paolo Bancaro is going to be making 41, $42 million. Now, those numbers sound big, but I want to remind you the salary cap is also increasing dramatically over the next several years too. We're going to work on percentages of the cap here very, very soon to just kind of get a sense of what these numbers are. And we'll, we'll go over that after free agency and after the dust settles here a little bit. It's a little bit easier to handle the numbers uh, once we have a little bit more information, it's hard to predict what the magic are going to be. Clay Thompson, though, is probably one of the most difficult players to price. He is obviously coming off a contract that paid him $41, $42 million. Um, the, I believe the last year of his deal paid him like 40 in the $40 million. Golden State is trying to cut their tax bill. They're trying very, very hard to get under the second apron and limit their tax bill. They paid like $170 million in tax and in, in luxury tax payments to the league. Um, that was finalized earlier, earlier this, this week. That's a lot of money for a team that didn't make the playoffs. And so obviously they brought Draymond Green back down. They gave him a four-year $100 million deal. And Clay Thompson was sitting there like, well, you gave Andrew Wiggins a four-year deal. You gave Draymond Green a four-year deal. I want my four-year deal. I want my security. And while it's almost certain that he is going to take a pay cut, he's not going to get uh, get $40 million again. He wants a deal similar to Draymond Green. Again, four years, $100 million signed, I think, last year. Um, that one's, you know, I'd rather play, pay Clay Thompson than Draymond Green right now. And so that, to me, feels like the baseline. Um, you better at least pay that much because Golden State's going to match and if Golden State's willing to pay Klay Thompson that, Klay Thompson's going to stay in Golden State. I think ultimately, money being equal, Klay Thompson will stay with the Warriors. And honestly, I'm I'm willing to predict that that's what's going to happen. That Klay Thompson will stay with the Warriors. That all this noise, all these reports, all these rumors are Klay Thompson trying to dredge things up to get the Warriors to move off of their, their position and sign him early. In fact, I would not be surprised if we see an agreement between the Warriors and Klay Thompson on a new contract before we even get to June 30th. I, 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 I am confident in say, I, I, I don't know if I'm confident in saying this, but I would not be surprised if this podcast is moot by next week. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about what's going on in the league tomorrow. Um, trying to price Clay Thompson is just incredibly difficult. Uh, Eric Pincus of Bleacher Report did hit, you know, we talked a little bit about this earlier in the week. Um, did his kind of projections, and he's a cap expert. You know, he is someone that does have some sourcing. He predicted the Orlando Magic signing Clay Thompson to a, uh, let me just find it, find it here, um, to an, a three-year $81.9 million deal. That's $27.3 million average annual salary. Pretty good deal. Um, that's about where I think it would fall. And, 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 you know, would you sign that? That's, you know, if you got $50 million in cap room, that's half your cap room on that. Um, you know, I was listening to some other people talk about free agency and say, well, you know, are you going to pay D'Angelo Russell $25 million? It sounds like it's not going to cost that. It sounds like D'Angelo Russell might make more staying with the Lakers and not opting out. It's sounding like that he's going to come closer to $20 million than seven than, than $25. Um, that, cha that changes maybe some of the equation a little bit. 
Tyus Jones is probably looking for 18, 18 per year. Clay Thompson is the expensive option here. But again, it's hard to price him because Eric Pincus thinks three years for three years at 27.3 million per is enough to get him, is enough to get him away from Golden State. Meanwhile, Bobby Marks, another front office expert, has him going at two years, $70 million. Now you're probably gonna have to pay a premium for fewer years, pay a little bit more, but the difference, but that's a difference between 35 and $27 million. That's an $8 million difference. And obviously. You're spending $35 million of your cap room when you only have 50. 50, that leaves you with 15 left to fill out the rest of your roster. And again, that may be fine. Orlando may just be looking like, hey, let's let's spend some money to spend some money to have that big salary. We'll figure out what to do with it later. I don't think that's how the Magic operate. I don't think, like, I don't think the Magic would go for a two-year $70 million deal on Thompson. I don't, you know, they might do that for a Paul George, but I don't think they would do that for Clay Thompson. Clay, yeah, that's the kind of deal like Philadelphia would make to make sure they get Clay Thompson because their window again is these next two years. They got to win a championship and compete for a championship now. Orlando is trying to grow there, and if they get there faster, even better. But Orlando knows they've got time. They got time to keep growing and developing things, and more importantly, they know they will have more bites at the apple. If you sign Clay to a two-year $70 million contract, it doesn't work out or you don't want to re-sign him again in two years, you don't have that bite at the apple again. It's gone. You're not going to have the money to replace a $35 million Clay Thompson. And to me, that's the larger point. You have a better chance of replacing a $27 million Clay Thompson or a $20 million or $22 million to Angel Russell or whoever else, using him in trades or whatever else, you have a better chance at replacing those players and being able to recycle things than going for Clay Thompson. Because again, Clay Thompson's window is the next three years. He's done in three years. Let's, you know, I don't, I'm not saying he's going to retire in three years, but retirement ain't far away for Clay Thompson. And that's the bigger point here. The Magic don't need to go all in. And, and Clay Thompson is an all in proposition. Because he has to win now. Forget the team. He has to win now. His time in the NBA is running out. The clock is ticking for him. And the Magic have a little bit of a wider berth. They can be a little bit more patient, slow played a little bit, give themselves outs in case something doesn't work or in case something better comes along. Again, to me, so much of this offseason is setting the table for the next move the move that we don't know about yet um, or the star that we don't know is available yet. The Magic, making trades with the Magic right now is really hard. Like, yes, you could absorb a lot into cap room, but, you know, your only big salaries that you're willing to trade because the Magic are not trading Jonathan Isaac right now is Cole Anthony and Wendell Carter. And that's a $12 million salary and a $13 million salary. And yeah, you can take, again, take a lot into cap room, but... That's not a lot to work with, both coming off of down years. The Magic needs some salary ballast, is what I'm is is, is for the next trade. And Clay Thompson just isn't that. Because in two years, he's gonna be older and probably not worth the contract that he's signing. Again, you're signing him to a salary based on past performance more than future performance. And you need to be signing people for future performance because the Magic's future is more important than their present still. They need to be better in the present. They need to improve in the present. But we're talking about winning the title in 2027, 2028, 2029. 2025 is is probably not the Magic's year. It could be. I'm not going to sit and pretend it's not. It could be. But we're talking talking realistically 2027, 2028, 2029 as the years that this franchise should be competing for championships. And that's the time that we need to be preparing for. And that's why I'm not into the Clay Thompson signing. But if there's a takeaway from all this, it's that, yes, if the Magic do sign Clay Thompson, if that is the direction the team is going, he would help a lot. The three-point shooting matters. I will I will probably talk myself into Buddy Heald as a bench, bench scorer. 
Give me, sign me Buddy Heald to come off the bench, play alongside Anthony Black, alongside Cole Anthony, put him in that Joe Ingles role, and he gets cold, you have Jed Howard available, or he gets hurt, you have Jed Howard available. Give me, give me an extra shooter off the bench. Go get me another nice shooter to play that, that off-guard role next to Jalen Suggs. You know, maybe it's Contavious Caldwell Pope. Maybe that's where you know you're gonna sink $20 million into him, sink 12 into give a give a two-year 24, 25 to Buddy Heald or something like that. Maybe that's the direction the Magic are going. The Magic have a lot of directions they can go. It's it's pretty exciting what, what they could do. Um they could just spend their cap room forward a year too. Like it's I'm not I don't think we should put that out of the realm of possibility as 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 unboring and frustrating as that might be. Clay Thompson, though, would help this team because shooting matters. It's just a question of whether the Magic want to go all in on Clay Thompson and his time frame rather than stick to their time frame. And that's why I think Clay Thompson is not the option for this Magic team quite yet. Timing just isn't right. The Magic are going to have to go for a player like him very, very soon. Now just may not be the time. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Hit your tune in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the places you download podcasts to your podcast-enabled listening device. Be sure, be sure to check us out on our YouTube page as well. We just passed 3,000 subscribers. Thank you for everyone who subscribed to our YouTube page. Tell your friends. Bring them to the YouTube page. Helps us out a ton, whether you listen audio or on video. Truly appreciate you all listening and watching. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com as well. You can find us on Twitter at omagicdaily. And also be sure to check out my Patreon page, the Orlando Magic Hub at patreon.com slash Hub. On there, I am doing my player evaluations. I'm doing my playoff lessons, all my usual postseason stuff. I am wrapping that up this week. Uh, I'm going to probably do Paolo Bancaro, uh, kind of the capper later. Uh, I may work on that tomorrow, actually. Um, Later this week, have Mo Wagner up today. Um, we'll have uh, in the morning, not you know, in case you're listening overnight. Um, we got a lot. I got a lot of stuff planned there, but I'm always looking for new ideas to help you out. So if you choose to subscribe, thank you very much for doing so. Check it out as well at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. And as always, I thank you all for your support. Now that you're done listening to me, be sure to check out the Locked On Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7. Covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. On tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to go through the decisions the Magic have with their own free agents this offseason. Could the Magic bring back Gary Harris? Could the Magic bring back Markel Fultz? What do the Magic do with Mo Wagner? I'll make some predictions. I'll make some statements about what I have the Magic doing this offseason with their own free agents and what that might tell us beyond because the Magic could do anything with them already. They can already negotiate with them at the moment, although it feels like everyone's kind of slow playing. I don't think teams haven't quite taken advantage of that, except for maybe Indiana with Pascal Siakam. But that's either here nor there. We'll get to all that on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Magic. But until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Phil Frost. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.